Okay, so we've installed that patch. So let's get back to what we were doing, which was to add a wireless network profile for the Ding Dong network. So we want to go to Start, Control Panel, Network Connections. Right click on our wireless connection. Go to Properties. And there's our Wireless Networks tab. We want to make sure that this checkbox has been checked. And let's go back to adding a profile for our wireless network. So we click Add. And if we look up here, what do we see? We see a new checkbox. Connect even if this network is not broadcasting. Well, there you go. That's what we want right there. So let's uncheck this. And this allows us to get into here with our network key. Let's copy our network key. Paste it in there. Change our security type to WPA2. AS is fine. And our SSID is. And let's click OK. Well, as we can see, this still is not working. So what could be the problem? Well, let's try something else then. We're going to go ahead and make this a broadcasting SSID. And then we're going to try to add it while it's broadcasting. Let's go ahead and click connect. And it allows us to connect. So let's try to make this a non broadcasting network after the fact. See what happens. <clears throat> Going to network connections, properties, and we're going to change the setting of this. Well look there it went and did it by itself. Click OK. So I guess what we can take from that is if we want to use a non-broadcasting SSID, we go ahead and set it up as a broadcasting SSID and then hide it after the fact. Now if we go in here and we look for our view available wireless networks, we can see Ding Dong is no longer available. However, we are connected to that network. So the question is, is it really worth all this bother? Well, the short answer is no, it's not. When it comes to wireless security, hiding your SSID offers next to no security. Not only is the amount of security that it provides almost negligible. It directly interferes with the wireless setup methods we're going to demonstrate in this tutorial. So moving on, let's go ahead and enable our SSID broadcast. So we have our router set up with security. 
we've got a profile on this machine set up to connect to it. The question is, how do we do the same thing on our other machines? Do we really want to go through all this hassle of copying and pasting the network key and setting up all these settings and everything else we went through on this machine, on all our other machines? No, absolutely not. Which is why Windows has a convenience feature called Windows Connect Now, which allows us to take these settings, copy them to a USB device, and then conveniently move those settings from machine to machine to machine in a very simple manner. We're going to show you how that works right now. So let's go back down into our available networks. And this is the network we're concerned about. We want to create a profile which allows our other machines to connect to this network on our other computers. So how do we do that? Simply click on set up wireless network for a smaller home office. And this utility allows us to copy those parameters onto a USB drive for our other computers. Now we can disregard this. This is another network. So what we want to do is set up a new wireless network. Click Next. And our SSID is. And then the choices are automatically assign a network key or manually assign a network key. Now if we choose automatically assign a network key, we're going to have to take the key that this wizard provides and copy it and paste it into our wireless security settings. We can do that if we want or we cannot. I'm going to choose not to do that and stick with our current security key. So let me grab that real quick over here, just in case. And we can uncheck this so we can make sure that what we've got in here is correct. And that looks good. Go back to hide that. Next. Alright, now this option down here is set up network manually. What that does is it gives us the ability to create a text file and then print it out. So in case we don't have a USB drive for whatever reason, we can just walk that piece of paper over to our other computers and manually type the information in. We're going to choose use we're going to choose use USB flash drive. Click next. I happen to know that the letter to our USB drive is H. Click next. Okay, so this basically just walks us through what we want to do next. What we don't want to do is click next because if we do, it'll delete the information it just placed on our USB drive. You see the last instruction it gives us is to plug the flash drive back into this computer and click next. Once you click next, it deletes that configuration information off the USB drive. So let's go to another machine and give this a shot. 